Missouri's main target at quarterback makes his decision tomorrow, and Dennis Gates has hired his offensive coordinator. What do I think about this move? Let's talk about it all right now on Locked On Mizzou. You are Locked On Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso, and one of more than 12 million people who tuned in to the Iowa LSU women's game last night. But I have to say, while I enjoyed the game, the commentary around the game leaves a lot to be desired. I do not want this to devolve into the battle of the sexes, I have to admit. So I want to explain that in just a little bit, but let's start with some Mizzou football. And when it comes to actual college news right now, we're in a bit of a dead period here in the post black and gold game spring practices world for Missouri. Many other colleges still doing their spring practices. Missouri obviously finishes up very early, but also we're in a dead period in terms of the transfer portal. Now in a couple weeks, actually less than two weeks on Tuesday the 16th from Tuesday the 30th here in April, the football portal will be open. Though from Missouri's perspective, hopefully this will be a fairly dead period as well. Not literally speaking, but just in terms of news, because I think at this point, Missouri basically has their two deep settled, certainly on offense. I think there's no question, but even defensively, I think Missouri seems pretty pleased with Toriano Pride, Chris McClellan, Darius Smith, and the guys, the main guys they've brought in through the portal to play key roles this season. So I would say as long as nobody transfers out, I wouldn't expect any major transfers in at this point either. Missouri got Drew Pine from Arizona State. It's, it's backup quarterback position should now be settled. Really not a lot of huge questions on this roster at this point. Really the one question out there right now considering Mizzou football is on the high school side of things. Pennsylvania State quarterback Matt Zollers talked about him a lot on the podcast, a four-star guy. His recruitment's really picked up in the last few months or so. He was a guy who really flew under the radar starting with his junior season, but now he's a guy that, well, it seems like this is really an SEC battle at this point. While Penn State, you can't ignore them, certainly. He's visited Penn State, well, his home state school, one of them anyway, more than just about anybody. Pittsburgh, where his brother is a walk-on, his older brother is a walk-on. They're in the mix as well. But everything I've heard, most people seem to think this is a battle between Missouri and Georgia and possibly a late-charging Alabama Crimson Tide squad as well. Now, Missouri has been in earlier than Georgia and Alabama, particularly Alabama, sort of sneaking in the lack of the back door of the recruitment here in the last few weeks or so. I would say that still Missouri and Georgia is probably your likely target here. Missouri people seem to think they're feeling pretty confident with Zollers. Again, a kid who's who's risen up a lot over the last few months or so. I think a lot of that is because he's a multi-sport kind of guy. He plays basketball in high school as well. And so during the summer, he's doing other things, not necessarily going to all the major football camps that your typical four-star quarterbacks are going to. So Zollers, listen, if Georgia and Alabama are off or, or after him, that's about all you need to know. So tomorrow on the program, certainly going to talk about Zollers wherever he ends up committing. Now, at some point in our lifetimes, I really believe that Missouri will hire an athletic director. But the lack of an AD has not stopped Dennis Gates from hiring his new assistant coach, and it's somebody he knows quite well. It's Rob Summers, a guy who was with Gates for three seasons at Cleveland State as his top assistant. Summers spent the past two years with Miami of Ohio. So if I was in a press conference with Dennis Gates, I think the obvious first question would be, 
Why didn't Summers come with Dennis Gates initially? Now, you look at it and say, okay, he went from my from Cleveland State to Miami of Ohio. Geographically, not a huge move there. Maybe he had some personal family reasons for sticking around. Again, just a question, just an obvious question that I think should be asked here. But another interesting thing to note here, apparently this was Gates' offensive coordinator, as he's been described at Cleveland State. And I have some listeners who I think were expecting me to maybe blow a gasket when Dennis Gates hired an offensive guy to be his next assistant coach. And, and in theory, certainly in a vacuum, I would have preferred a defensive guy. But I'm not going to go crazy about this hire whatsoever because simply because a guy is known as an offensive type of guy, well, that he may have some stuff to bring to the table defensively too. Also, hey, Dennis Gates knows what he wants in an assistant coach. Obviously, he's very comfortable here with with Summers. And let me just be clear here about my my defensive complaints about Gates, especially the last couple years, in particular this past season with Missouri. Number one in an alternative universe where I went down the coaching path instead of this whole podcasting you know, investor day trader thing that I find myself engulfed in the last couple decades. If I had myself, I'm about the same age as Dennis Gates, more or less. If I decided to go down that path, well, I think I would have, my philosophy, if I were recruiting, if I were recruiting, I would recruit offense first and coach defense. In other words, give me the ability, give me the talent, and I will have confidence in myself as a coach that I can, we can figure out the other stuff. I get the feeling that Dennis Gates has a similar philosophy, and overall, I'm okay with that. I really am. I, and a lot of people say that defense is effort, and to some extent, that's true, though I do think that defenses have evolved a lot since I was in, in high school, for instance. Say, cut, off, cut it off after 2000, 2001 or so, the last 20, 25 years. I just feel like not only are players much more athletic than they used to be, the amount of guys who can get their heads at the rim these days is astonishing compared to when I used to play. But they're also better coached, too, in my opinion. Team defense in college right now is in a lot better place than team offense. But that's where, to me, Dennis Gates – his defense has been lacking the first couple years here in Columbia. We're not really playing a cohesive team defense. We're simply trying to create havoc. And I think the fixes for this are, are relatively simple. Stop helping off of the strong side corner. Say it with me, everybody. Stop helping off the strong side corner three man. And really just stop over-helping and double-teaming ever, everything and overextending for steals in general. And, and maybe we will. Maybe we will make some, some adjustments next year with perhaps, in theory, some bigger guards, you know, that type of deal. I, I do want to see – I just want to see some better defense, a more cohesive team defense plan in year three. Now, I reserve the right to blow a head gasket if in the middle of the of next season, if I think we still have no plan defensively and we're just running around with with just trying to create havoc with no real purpose in mind. Hey, if that's true, then I do reserve the right to to retroactively go nuts about this hire. But According to Dennis Gates, he says, quote, as somebody who specializes in post-development, Rob is the perfect piece to round out our coaching staff. Very few coaches have front court playing experience, and his knowledge and ability to teach the position will no doubt elevate our program. So that's a really interesting quote and point, actually, because let's face it, Coach Summers here, a, a legit seven-footer, you know, most guys – aren't Patrick Ewing. Most head coaches are six feet tall, maybe shorter. Dennis Gates at 6'4 is generally a pretty tall coach these days. So for whatever reason, the big guys, they don't tend to get into coaching quite as much as the guards. I have no idea really why that is, but I do think that's an accurate that's an accurate observation there by Coach Gates. And certainly Missouri's front court could have used a lot of work last season. So again, I, I'm I'm willing to be open-minded here and say that this can be a great hire. Again, in theory, 
I would have liked to – I wanted Dennis Gates to find his Kirby more. Not necessarily an offensive coordinator, just somebody to take a little bit off of Dennis Gates' plate and just compliment what he's doing. That's more what I was saying there because I believe that's what Kirby Moore did for Eli Drinkwitz. And when it comes to the basketball transfer portal, well, it finally happened. Zeke Mayo is dead to me. So let's talk about him and update Missouri's position in the transfer portal as we sit here and speak today. But first, let's talk about Amazon Fire TV, which is not only the best way to get sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis, I think it's the best place to watch movies as well, whether you're talking about the Fire TV inside of your smart TV, or to me, even better, the Fire TV stick. You can take with you anywhere, plug into any existing TV that provides access to every type of content you could possibly imagine. Well, Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver you a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Just trust me on this one. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. And my goodness, is the sports calendar loaded this time of year or what? Well, FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on the tourney, Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL. Of course, we got some major golf tournaments coming. You just got to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, a long list of targets still out there on the transfer portal for the Missouri Basketball Tigers. But one name we can scratch off, and in fact, let's just really just scratch it off until I make a dent in my desk. Because Zeke Mayo, the former South Dakota State Jackrabbit, well, he's going to KU. So... The less said about that young man, the better. So let's move on and move on to more exciting times, including Tony Perkins, who cut down his top six schools. I talked about Perkins yesterday on the program, an Iowa guard who entered the portal, six foot four, lead ball handler, point guard type, not the greatest shooter in the world, but somebody who I think defensively would help Missouri. And certainly with Nick Honor moving on, with Sean East moving on, the Tigers are definitely going to need more than one lead ball handler other than just Anthony Robinson. And indeed, a true point guard would go a long way into into making Dennis Gates' offense function a little bit better next season. Frankly, Nick Honor was just by necessity – he was a true point guard, had to be moved off the ball, obviously, for various reasons. Didn't really work out. So Tony Perkins going to be interesting to see what happens with his recruitment. Now, obviously, so far, only Jacob Cruz, a, a shooter, a b- taller six foot eight type shooter, Seems like he is, well, it doesn't seem like it. He is the only player that Missouri has so far. And if that's making you a little bit nervous, well, frankly, it really shouldn't. I was looking at the Athletics' top 96 players in the portal the other day. Well, only four of the top 40, for example, have actually committed to a school. Jacob Cruz, by the way, 70th on that list. In other words, there's still a long, long way to go in this process, although I suspect Mizzou will have a few more players over the next month or so. So stay tuned to Locked On Mizzou. I'll have all the analysis whenever that comes. 
No, I think all of us who are casual observers, tough not to fall in love with the NC State Wolfpack and DJ Burns on their run to the Final Four here. Burns in particular, just such an entertaining player. And, and from my perspective, I'm really rooting hard for Mohamed Diara as well. Obviously a former Tiger. And really it's not totally clear to me exactly ha what happened with Missouri and Diara last season was it more him wanting to move on or Dennis Gates maybe wanting him to move on that's an open question for me so a lot of questions that Missouri fans are asking right now for example did Dennis Gates mess up here with Mohamed Diara well I would say yes is the obvious answer but it's also a little bit more subtle than that because it's also fair to say that nobody really saw this run that Diara has been on the last few weeks coming. And by by nobody, I mean nobody really at NC State either. One of my best friends is is very, very deeply connected over in Raleigh. And yeah, nobody really saw this coming until the last month or so. But you know what? To me, though, this isn't that big of a shock. While Diara certainly... It was a flawed player last season, remains a flawed player. We're all flawed in life, right? Nobody's actually perfect. But I will say, his him actually developing here, this is what happens, especially with big guys, with athletic big guys who maybe don't have a ton of experience playing basketball yet. Eventually, the light can just come on, and it does take them a little bit more time, I think, generally speaking, than guards. So one thing I've been worried about in college basketball and American basketball in general is because of the transfer portal, because of, of course, guys entering the NBA earlier and earlier as they have for, for decades now, I do wonder that if high major basketball, if that's no longer a place where guys can sit on the bench for a year or two and actually develop, no, we get impatient and we move on to the next place. Well, if high major college basketball is not where guys develop, then where are they going to develop? Are we going to leave it up to the AAU circuit and high school basketball coaches? Because that doesn't seem like that's worked out very well for American basketball so far. It sure seems like to me, and a lot of people have made this observations, but generally speaking, a lot of international players as they enter the league are a little bit better equipped to play pro basketball, to play in a team environment for whatever reason. So again, where does this development come from? This is an open question, but it's something that if I'm in charge of the NBA, if I'm in charge of the United States Olympic basketball team, if I'm the SEC commissioner, these are questions that are important. It's certainly something that we as fans of American basketball should be asking ourselves, in my opinion. Now, all the way back on January 30th, I posted a podcast entitled Mizzou Basketball is in Better Shape Than Arkansas. Now, obviously, part of that particular thought didn't age astonishingly well, did it? Missouri would go on to, well, lose the rest of its games in the SEC at that point. But obviously, even on January 30th, I and all, all of us Missouri fans knew that it, the season was not going well. But what I was trying to say is, hey, despite all of this, guess what? Eric Musselman, he doesn't look like he's long for Fayetteville. And I had a whole bunch of Razorback fans come at me in the YouTube comments saying that I was an idiot, you wish, ha ha, LOL, ha ha, ha ha. Anybody see Curb Your Enthusiasm? Man, that was a funny scene. But anyway, regardless, it sure looks like Eric Musselman is indeed out the door at Arkansas. Reportedly, according to Jeff Goodman, he is the leading candidate to be the next coach at USC. So I'll take my apology in the comments of this particular episode, Arkansas fans, if you are so inclined. But obviously, on some level, this is a surprising development. Although Musselman seems like a guy who likes to hop around a little bit, like most coaches, things have gone really well in Arkansas. But as I had said all the way back on January 30th, there's a very obvious difference of opinion between Musselman and the big time donors, probably the biggest donor family at the University of Arkansas. Well, 
Once that happened, it seemed like Musselman wasn't getting the NIL he wanted, and when he's not getting what he wants, he's out the door. So again, sorry Arkansas fans, but even though Missouri basketball may not be in great shape, you can certainly make that argument. Well, I was right about Eric Musselman. I'll give myself that. And while Coach Musselman is famously a guy who likes to take his shirt off, well, I think all the people who are falling all over themselves to say that the women's tournament is now more entertaining than the men's tournament, well, I would advise those people to keep their shirts on a little bit. Frankly, I do not want basketball to devolve into a battle of the sexes. That's not actually good for the sport, not for the women's side or the men's side. I don't think there has to be a conflict here whatsoever. In fact, I think there's a symbiotic relationship between the two games. So let's talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And again, find that right person. It's like it's the best thing that's ever happened to you. You'll be falling over yourself trying to give them money, whereas you find the wrong person, oh my goodness, it's a bigger cost than just the cost of money that you're giving them each and every week. And here's the thing. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn is a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. So as I'm sure many of you did last night, according to the ratings, as I said, more than 12 million people watched Iowa and LSU's game last night. Obviously, Caitlin Clark in particular and Angel Reese, among others, are real big draws and big stars there. The bottom line is people care about Caitlin Clark and her and her 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 talents for whatever reason. And that's the thing. It is sort of a subjective value there. And I've just noticed a lot of people this year can't just simply say, "Hey, man, this this Caitlin Clark, she sure is great, isn't she?" And man, I'm more into the women's tournament than ever. No, they have to then contrast it with their interest in the in the men's tournament and say, oh, well, this is it's just not as good as it used to be. And actually, I'm more into the women's tournament than the men's tournament. And I, I'm just telling you, if you want to grow the popularity of women's basketball, that's not particularly helpful, in my opinion. That creates tribalism that, in my opinion, turns off a lot of men's basketball fans that otherwise would be drawn to Caitlin Clark because here's the thing when I watch Clark play obviously one of the reasons she's compelling to watch is she's one of the first women if not the first women's player that I can recall that takes Steph Curry like deep threes obviously but for my money I love Caitlin Clark's passing almost more than anything just her touch leading girls down the court into the post just leading them to the basket I, that never gets old to me I really enjoy watching her pass. But here's the thing. When when you're comparing the women to the men, I think you're missing the point a little bit because women to put it to put it an obvious statement on it, women collectively are never going to be as or more athletic than men. Now, individually, for example, obviously Caitlin Clark, I'll just say she would roast me one-on-one -on -one in basketball. She absolutely would. And Serena Williams, same thing. If she played, even though she's retired, if we played tennis, I, pl I promise she would absolutely roast me and anyone listening to my voice right now. But here's the thing. Serena Williams, one of the most famous athletes of all time, one of the most successful athletes of all time, you know what she never said? She never said, I could beat Roger Federer, and she never compared herself to Roger Federer or any of the great men's players. And in fact, when a reporter one time asked her if she thought she could compete on the men's tour, she slammed that stuff down 
like a lazy volley at the net. She said quite the opposite. Basically, I'm paraphrasing her, but basically she said, I couldn't beat the 200th best man man on tour. In fact, he would kill me. So basically, that was all she ever had to say about it. So to me, when I see people like Paul Pierce go on television yesterday and try to make women's basketball into some sort of racial or political battleground or battle of the sexes, which I've seen a lot on social media a lot of times, I just find all of that unhelpful. Because here's the thing, guys. When you looked into the crowd yesterday, you saw men in the crowd watching the women's game. And obviously, when you look at the men's crowds, you see plenty of women in those crowds too. There's no reason that this should be a men versus women thing. And in fact, if more women are drawn into the sport because of Caitlin Clark, more little girls end up becoming basketball fans because of it. Well, guess what? That means they're probably going to like the NBA a little bit more than they otherwise would have too. That means they're probably going to like the men's March Madness a little bit more than they otherwise would have too. So to me, both ways – whether it's the men comparing to the, the women, vice versa, that's the wrong way to go about it. Whatever is good for basketball is good for basketball. And the quality of women's basketball has improved dramatically over the last 10 years or so. But again, fans of that sport, in my opinion, would be very wise to not let this whole thing descend into tribalism. There's, I know part of this is human nature. I'm a professional wrestling fan. I see it right now. Fans of WWE and AEW, a lot of them online, they just have to argue with each other and tell the others why their product sucks. Well, why can't I just like all basketball? Is that okay? Can I enjoy DJ Burns and Caitlin Clark? Is that okay with all of you? Or do I have to pick a side? God forbid... Back in the day, God forbid I like WWE and AEW. God forbid that back in 1968, when my dad was in the SAE house, God forbid I like the AFL and the NFL. God forbid I like both both products. You know, I, again, I bring that example up because obviously decades ago, that's hard for football fans of today to relate to because there is just one league essentially for all intents and purposes. But back in the day, there was a lot of tribalism between fans of the St. Louis Cardinals, the Kansas City Chiefs, the AFL fans versus the NFL fans. And I'm just telling you, a lot of that stuff is very silly at a certain point. And the, the bottom line is, while the AFL and the NFL were competing directly, men's and women's basketball, it really shouldn't be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. And again, as I think I've made a pretty compelling case here. I think there's a symbiotic relationship. What's good for men's basketball is good for women's basketball. And what's good for women's basketball is good for men's basketball. It's good for the sport in general. So to me, knock off the tribalism. This is not this is not Jimmy Connors versus versus Billie Jean King and the battle of the sexes back in the day. That's not what this is. Serena Williams didn't embrace that, and I don't think we should either. That's just my opinion. But hey, as always, I'd love to hear what you all think about my comments, your comments on my comments, comments on top of comments. Leave them all. X.com, Instagram, Facebook, at Locked on Mizzou. Hit me up, LockedOnMizzou at gmail.com. And of course, coming up on the next episode of Locked on Mizzou, I'm going to talk about Matt Zollers and where he ends up, either the next one or Friday show. We'll see exactly what time his announcement is. If it's more toward the evening, we'll probably talk about it more on Friday. So prepare for that. See you the next time right here on Locked on Mizzou.